Hello everyone. Today we are going to implement this giant sword slam in uh, boss attack. So here is the preview. So as you can see, uh, a giant sword appears on top of the boss enemy and slam it down. So with sound and uh, camera shake and everything. So let's see how to do that today. And this episode is sponsored by these generous patrons thank you very much for the support okay so let me create a blank map and let's create a simple landscape nothing nothing complicated just i just need some landscape that's all uh, so here I'm going to use uh, the Paragon characters Paragon Aurora and Paragon Gideon character Right So as the player character I'm gonna use let's select the third person game mode and as the player character I'm going to use this Paragon Aurora characters heroes Aurora uh, this Aurora player character you can download it from Unreal Marketplace. So, okay. Oh, maybe we don't need this. We can just drag and drop the Aurora character and let's process it. So, yeah, it works by default like this after you download it. And this is just as the character downloaded nothing is changed here okay now as for the boss character or the boss enemy character I'm going to create a new character so let's create a new folder boss and for this uh, let's create a character I'll call it boss so here as the mesh I'm going to use this under Paragon Gideon we have this Gideon character let me go here and select the mesh set the mesh like this move it down to properly align uh, here uh, as the animation blueprint I can use this Gideon anim blueprint this is also something I downloaded from Unreal Marketplace you can download also download it for free right this is what we have by default and let me place the boss also in the level facing the player character like this right now here we have the boss and I need it to be a little bit bigger so let's set select the capsule as the half height I'll give something like 120 radius 40 or maybe 50 140 right now let's scale this up now the boss is significantly bigger than the player so that's exactly what I wanted see this is the kind of scale I wanted alright 
let me save this map post battle okay now let's start attacking i start implementing the first attack so i have downloaded this weapon uh, it's just a generic sword this is the sword we have so i'm going to implement this giant sword slamming attack so for that let me create another blueprint in the type of actor so i'm gonna call it attack base right so here right so to this let's add the sword okay um this should be like this uh, actually i think it would it should be a little bit oh the scale should be let me place this in the world oh this is not nearly enough let's make the size 10 right and move it Six hundred units. Right, this scale is all right. I think. Right, and also when the player looking at the sword like this, we don't see the shape of the sword because uh, uh, only from this side we can clearly see it's a sword. So. I'll add a rotation of 90 degrees like this. Now we can see it's clearly a sword. All right. Now first, um, this sword uh, should not just appear like this. It should uh, gradually appear. Like uh, so. For that, in order to do that, we have to modify the material of this sword. Right. Let's create a material here. Um, sort. And here I'll set as the preview object the sword. Let me select the sword here and use this teapot. now the sword is like that uh, but it's too small we can't really see okay then let's just keep using this cylinder okay now let's define a vector parameter color i'll use the color red and this also needs to have an emission so let's multiply this by emissive color sorry emission uh, let's promote this to parameter emission and let's use so value let's try right this 
much of emission is good okay let me apply this to the sword go to attack base and sword okay so this is how it looks in here uh, what if I increase further not much preference but okay all right so the next thing now we need to do is we need to make this gradually appear so for that uh, we need to have a part of the sword uh, it should be transparent so I'll change the blend mode to translucent so we have this opacity option enabled um, then let's promote the opacity also to a parameter what if I make it like 0.5 Well, we don't really see a difference because uh, we see because of the high emission. Six. Yeah. So how do we make like gradually from bottom to top make this appear? So for that, let's use a mask like this let's get the texture coordinate and here let's mask can get using a component mask only the g value that means the vertical value vertical coordinates coordinate of the sword mm, vertical coordinate uh, vertical sorry not the uh, coordinate vertical texture coordinate um, and then um, at the bottom initially at the bottom uh, everything should be invisible then as I increase the value it should appear uh, let's say the multiply here so here if I just mask G uh, in the top it would be 0 in the bottom it would be 1 let me do it like this so as you can see here you see in the top we see a hint of transparency but because of the high emission we don't really see any difference so yeah let's multiply the emissive part as well see now the top part is we don't have much of a emission as well okay and now uh, let's subtract some value from this let's call it mask so when the mask is zero we just get this value the texture coordinate value if I make it 1 everything is non transparent so as I decrease this the object should become more and more visible see okay if I make it 0.8 you can see the bottom half is visible if I make it 0.6 more of it is visible so if I make it 0 everything is visible but this top part is uh, not fully transparent so if I make it like minus 1 
everything is totally visible okay uh, well to be safe let's add clamp between 0 and 1 as here okay right now we need to change this mask value from plus 1 to minus 1 as we make the sword appear right let me apply this and let's go to the tag base here uh, let's add a custom event let's call it charge so it's like getting ready to attack mm, not like charging what do we say like charging the sword i don't know it's like make the weapon ready to do the attack so here uh, let's add um oh not charge um Let's call it just fade in. Fade in. Okay. So now here let's add the timeline. Fade in. Let's add a new flow track and let's call it mask. So as I said here, it should be changing from plus one to minus one so let's add a new key somewhere over here time zero value one and we need the length of how much let's say three seconds we don't need five seconds it's it would be too large too low final value is um, time 3 value minus 1 uh, now let's make it curved like this uh, we can optimize this later fine tune it later uh, I'll use play from start right and uh, now on the update I'm gonna update this mask value of the sword so get the sword set scale parameter value on material uh, let's call this mask parameter name is mask did we use capital M no parameter value is mask value right now let's call this in the begin play this is only for testing we can connect these functions everything later dynamically see the sword appears and you can see so it doesn't exactly start appearing from the bottom it start appearing from two parts but it's fine the reason is i think it has it has something to do with the uv of this model is set but still it's fine we see gradually appearing of the sword okay right 
Uh, now the next part is launching the attack so the sword should like fall down like this but before falling down I think it should uh, turn uh, we should rotate the turn uh, rotate the sword uh, like this because that's the cutting side of the sword okay so let's add another event here what should we name it let's call it uh, launch attack right so in order to launch the attack first I need to rotate the sword so get the sword at the moment it has a rotation of 90 degrees in X direction uh, wait we need to um, remove this part so then sword becomes straight and uh, not in X now we yeah we have in X 90 degrees rotation uh, but we need to gradually uh, remove it make it zero so it will I uh, know we should keep it as it is right here more component two i'm not gonna change the relative location so get the relative location and keep it as it is keep the x rotation as 90 and remove this uh, 90 rotation in this it so the sword will become turn towards the player uh, towards uh, cutting part cutting side will align towards the attack okay let's make it is in and is out with 0.4 right shall we yeah after this Fading part is completed. Let's set the delay of how much. Let's say well, no, not necessary to have a delay after the chart is uh, faded in. Let's launch attack. So let's see how it looks. okay it rotated oh wait right now the actual attack mm -hmm. so for that let's how can we we have to rotate the sword to the ground um after turning let's give a delay of let's say one second and this time get rot component again let's do a more component so here also I'm not going to change the relative location so get relative location of the road component keep it as it is and here um, pitch well roll definitely should stay as it is so this should turn this way like this this is the attack so this pitch is changing how much 90 degrees or minus 90 degrees let's try 90 
and he said we don't need to change so get relative rotation uh -huh. sorry actually we can use the actor rotation for this I think both are same the location because we are not doing any location change get actor rotation with is in and is out over let's say 0.3 seconds all right let's see what happens right the attack did happen so what next so as you can see it just dropped the sword in front of the character it doesn't really rotate in towards the player but i need it to rotate towards the player so in the event tick let's write a simple function to set actor rotation <laughs> get player character Uh, rotation sorry location and also get actor uh, location of this actor find look at rotation so here we can update only the yo so we can make sure character the sword always rotates to the player but when we do the attack i think we need to disable that part see yeah so how here uh, before the delay or after the delay yeah after the delay let's disable the tag tick set tag to tick enabled false so character will stop rotating towards the player right now you see the sword rotates to the player oh it drops to the other side which is not what we need so i think we should make this minus because we are changing the yaw now that's why it rotates drops to the other side okay uh, but we don't really see much of an impact here because obviously we don't have any sounds and also we need to have some camera shakes and also I think it would look more cool if uh, the sword pulls back a little bit before dropping forward mm -hmm. so let's do another move component to before dropping the sword to make it rotate a little bit uh, 
to the back. And here, let's make it more slower. So instead of 90, let's say plus 20. So we should see the sword pulls back a little bit before doing the launching. See, okay. Now let's add some camera check. Mm -hmm. Boss blueprint class camera shake. Let's call it camera cam shake attack. Right now, what are the shake values? Actually, I tested it a little bit. So oscillation duration could be something like 0.3 because the shake should happen in a very limited time. So the blend in time, blend out time, I think the default values work. Uh, pitch, let's change um, minus 20, 50 and let's set the initial offset to zero. Right, shall we test with this? And let's play the shake here. The world camera shake. As the epicenter, I will use the location of the weapon, the attack as the shake class uh, this is select this cam shake attack and assign it inner radius some um, 500 outer 5000 fall of one right shall we check right it can be better so let's add uh, the same values to the u and roll as well 20 50 0 Do we need location oscillation? I don't think so. Let's see. Okay, let's try again. Right, so now we feel the attack more than what we felt before. Right. So here is the final preview. Here we have the first attack. So I'm going to stop this episode right here. So in the next episode, we are going to work on how to actually make this uh, boss character do these attacks uh, like again and again. Oh, wait, wait a second. Uh, we need to uh, make the sword disappear after the attack is done. Let's do that as well before ending this session. So for that actually we need to make this. Uh, we can use the dither temporal AA node. Yeah. As the alpha threshold, let me promote this. Let's make it one and let's multiply the opacity with the result of the dither temporal A node. 
when it is 1 it's fully visible when uh, if I make it 3 it becomes uh, start to fade out if I make it 0 it's still visible if I make it minus 1 fully invisible okay so let's add this part also to the material and after the attack is launched let's add another custom event fade out here also let's add a timeline what should we call it fade out mm, and actually having the timeline also with the same name as, uh, name as fade in is kind of confusing so let's make it fade sword for the fade in this one let's name it as to the fade okay so in the update get the sort set scalar parameter value on material in the update parameter name is alpha threshold s let me copy it and the parameter value oh we didn't define anything here okay the amount let's just call it either um it should also change from plus one to minus one Add a key time 0 value 1 let's make the length of this one 4 seconds it's okay to take some time because we, we need to see the sword disappear clearly gradually time 4 value minus 1 Okay, let's make this auto. Soto. Add another key. We can also time find unit later. Uh, uh, right, connect the dither value here. right now let's see wait why is it not disappearing ah sorry I didn't call this event anywhere so basically we need to call it let's have a delay uh, like one second or two seconds after the attack maybe one second is enough and let's call it up let's see okay the weapon disappeared I also imported this sound effect to be have attenuation settings here. No, uh, well, that's all right. So let's play that sound as well. Select sound here. 
on the attack uh, right when we do the shake place sound at location since I didn't assign attenuation settings uh, this sound will not fade in the distance but that's okay for now we can change attenuation later all right let's see I felt like sound is a little delayed so maybe let's play it I'm gonna stop this episode right here so in the upcoming episode let's see how to damage the character with this attack and how to make the enemy uh, or the boss continuously do these types of attack or when we implement other types of attacks I'm going to use uh, do different attacks from the boss based on the distance to the character or maybe randomly uh, let's think about that right so as always project files will be available for the download through patron page link would be in the description below and uh, uh, these are the other types of the attacks I wish to implement um, if you like to support my work you can get the membership of the patron club thanks for watching See you in another episode. Goodbye.